Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. Uh, I thought it was good practice. Tried to work this as we will for the next couple of days. You know, as much game like uh, as we can. Everybody off on the sideline. Substitutions in and out. Uh, all of those things. We'll have officials back out here for the next three days. So just trying to, you know, simulate a game as much as we possibly can. That's Dennis Allen talking about the Saints, who we thought would be joint practicing with the San Francisco 49ers as of today, but uh, San Francisco too banged up to do so. So the Saints will work out on their own prior to the preseason game coming up on Sunday night. Uh, one of the things that Dennis Allen also spoke about was Cam Jordan working inside. We know that the Saints have brought in Chase Young. We know that Carl Granderson is ascending. They have hopes for Isaiah Foskey, and Cam Jordan's production wasn't what we thought it should be or has been last year. So does moving him inside, you know, on third downs, and maybe even more frequently than that, make some sense? He just needs some reps in there. Look, I think it's probably been since he was in college that he had any, like, sort of significant reps inside as a rusher. He's moonlighted in there a little bit here and there, but never on a consistent basis. And so I think him getting some reps inside is going to be beneficial. And the reality is, is, you know, when you get to these passing downs, at most you're putting four defensive linemen on the field. So it's really about finding the best four that can work together as a group to affect the passer. And so we're trying to look at him inside. We're trying to look at Peyton Turner inside, Breezy Shepard, those guys, you know, are working inside. You know, hopefully that'll that'll allow us to have a little bit of depth and a little bit of rotation in terms of being able to rush the passer. Here's the deal. Um, if you got a third and 11 and you're going to put two guys on the end of the line of scrimmage on defense, it's going to be difficult for me to not have that be Carl Granderson and Chase Young right now. Cam Jordan is going to have his number retired in New Orleans. He might get a gold jacket, but he is not the pass rusher those two guys are. That is obvious to everyone. I'm hoping for a bit of a bounce back from him in terms of production, but he's still not better than Chase Young or Carl Granderson. So if you're going to get him on the field in third down situations, kick him down inside. I think Cam Jordan is a better interior rusher than Colin Saunders or Nathan Shepard. Like he's, I think he's better than those guys. I think he's got the size to do it. He's I mean, six he's, four, two eighty seven. Yeah, and Peyton Turner is six six two seventy, which is you know not maybe not as big as you would like, but he's still got good size. Yeah, and so this makes a ton of sense. They haven't done it a lot. But I'm, I'm for it right now. Get the best out of your best players. And Cam Jordan is not one of your top two pass rushers right now. He's just not. And that doesn't mean he can't rush the passer. But I, that, I think the idea of moving him inside is, is, is awesome. And the question is, can Peyton Turner do the same thing? And Dennis Allen was asked about that. Yeah, I think he's shown some effectiveness inside as a rusher. And I think he's shown some things off the edge, too. I, I think he's a versatile rusher. And so... Again, like I said, it's really going to be about getting this thing out of here, all right? And uh, and, and how do we get uh, the best four guys out there to rush the passer, wherever that may be? And that's the point. And and so I use this saying a lot: expectation breeds disappointment. I don't think any Saints fans are going to be disappointed in Peyton Turner's season this year. That's because there's no expectation. There's none. He's been here for a long time. And he's done nothing. I think the expectation might be that he won't that even he play hurt. a full season. Yeah, that's the expectation. And I don't think he'll be disappointed if he doesn't do that. Um, but I like at this point, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time talking about what Peyton Turner's potential is. Because why? But you can't rule it out. It'll just be gravy if he gives you anything there. But I think it, it's interesting moving those two guys inside at this point. Moving back a couple levels, Elante Taylor has gotten a ton of reps because Marshawn Lattimore has been out, and you've seen Paulson Adebo miss some time as well. And so uh, Dennis Allen talked about what he's seen from, from Elante Taylor. I've been really pleased with what I've seen out of Elante. I think his mindset's been outstanding. I think his work ethic has been outstanding. I think his understanding of the position has much, much improved. So I'm excited about what I think he can do, both outside corner, 
uh, and at the nickel position. I think we're fortunate in that we have, you know, I feel like some some depth at that position and, and an important position, you know, in particular for us and in, in the style of defense that we play. Allow me for a second to veer away from the 2024 Saints and to go a little bit bigger picture with that. It's going to be very interesting to watch the Saints defensive backfield evolve over the next 24 months because, you know, it just feels like Marshawn Lattimore might be not be part of the long-term plans. And you understand that you've got a guy in Paulson Adebo that you'd like to get signed to an extension. And then you've got Elante Taylor, who's a boundary corner in college, who's worked on the inside and is getting better at that. But can he play on the outside in time, especially if you move on from Marshawn Lattimore? Or is that Kool-Aid McKinstry's role to move into? And what does he bring to the table as he starts his rookie season and moves into years two and three in this organization? The, the talent level is is undeniable between that entire group. question is, how do you move the chess pieces around how do you make it work on the field? How do you make it work in the checkbook under the salary cap? And how does all that materialize? That's going to be very fascinating to watch in New Orleans over the next 24 months. But for this team, I think you're looking at Elante Taylor's a guy right now who's going to be working on the inside. If Marshawn Lattimore's injury lingers and he's not able to give you what you hope from for him, maybe you can bump him outside and then maybe you see Kool-Aid McKinstry uh, slide in there and play on the inside. That's 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 all hypothetical in terms of the injury situation. But the reality is that you've got a lot of moving pieces and you've got to decide what you want to do with those here uh, in the next couple of years at defensive back. Part of that is safety next to Tyron Matthew, where you were hoping that Jordan Howden would take that spot. And then you're looking at Jonathan Abram, who you signed and like, okay, well, who's going to win that job? And Dennis Allen talked about it. I haven't seen anything from any one of those safeties yet. Okay, probably with the exception of Tyron Matthew. I mean, I think ultimately what you're looking for is guys to make plays, guys to have production. So that's interceptions, that's PBUs, that's tackles, guys that are going to play a physical brand of football. Like those are all the things that I'm looking for. And I've, I'm seeing good things out of the safety position. And yet I haven't seen where somebody's just taking the bull by the horns and you know said that th- this is my job. Dennis Allen's a DB, and he's going to hold those guys to a high standard. And we know that Justin Simmons came in to visit. They said what they had to say. His camp said what they had to say. And we know that Justin Simmons left California with no contract. And now we know that Justin Simmons is in Atlanta chatting with the Falcons. Just because he left doesn't mean that he can't revisit things. You kind of get the entire buffet line menu and see what you want to pick if you're Justin Simmons. But it's clear the Saints have interest in him. And it's clear... That's because they're not over the moon with what's going on opposite Tyron. So I think that's still very much to, to be determined at this point, and we'll keep you posted on whatever it is that Justin Simmons decides to to do. Briefly switching over to the offense, just some news and notes on the day. Um, A.T. Perry dealing with a little bit of an injury, and Dennis Allen talked about that. We saw A.T. Perry walking up under his own power. Does that suggest that it's not like a significant injury? You know what? I, 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 I just know it's an ankle. That's all I really know. And that's a bummer because that's a guy that's fighting for a roster spot. And there is there is availability at wide receiver for the Saints. There are there are two guys with skins on the wall and the rest of them are just tossed in a bucket and like whatever. Some of them are older, some of them are younger, some of them are taller, some of them are shorter, some of them are faster, some are more physical, some are hurt, some are not. Like it's, it's a complete mixed bag at wide receiver beyond the top two guys and even Alave and Shahid have spent some time missing practice. So it's um, it's a it, inopportune time for A.T. Perry to go down for sure. I, I do think, though, that what he was able to do last year with the opportunities that he had, I think that even with him missing time, I think he still does have an inside track to make the team. I would be surprised if he was not on the team slash squad. Yeah. If he's not in that group, it would surprise me a little bit. Um, there have been some flashes that are, are real reasons for optimism with him. So, But again, it's just a dif- difficult time to, to take time with injury. Um, it's not a Kendra Miller situation where he's literally never out there, but this is a great time for him to be out there and to make some plays. And you would think he would get more opportunities after what he did in the preseason game on Saturday. We'll see if, if he can get back. No real update on that other than that he got an ankle issue and he walked off the field on his own power. Hopefully get some ice on that, get some treatment, tape it up, and, and go get him on Sunday. But we'll see. That's the uh, latest update on A.T. Perry. All right, that's it for Saints today. If you're looking for Saints coverage each and every day, Hunt on Saints is our YouTube channel. Go ahead and check it out right there. All our Saints information all year long 
at the Hunt on Saints channel. You can subscribe to it and get that right to your homepage. We certainly do appreciate it. Hey, it's Hunt. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button, leave your comments in the section below, and hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.